Welcome back to the Red Slayer Rides. I'm your host Connor and in today's video I'll be reviewing the Swarm at Thorpe Park. This epic B&M wing coaster that opened in 2012 is in my opinion the best wing coaster that I've been on even though I've only been on three. Wild Eagle, this, and Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. I rode this and Gatekeeper for the first time this year but this is not about Gatekeeper. This is about the Swarm, the better of the two wing coasters. It may not be as tall but this is a forceful wing coaster. Probably one of the most forceful B&Ms that I've been on. B&Ms are not known to be forceful, but this thing very much is. In this review, I will be going into the ride statistics, which I'm about to do in a second. And I'll dive into the layout, and we'll truly see how good the Swarm really is compared to other coasters of similar size and coasters that are bigger and smaller. And I will not be saying where it ranks on my top 50 because that's going to come in a different video. It was going to come way earlier, but I decided to hold off because I got this fancy new toy. It's Christmas Day, and I just got a very nice microphone that I'm using, and there's no static in the background, and I really like it. Anyways, the Swarm is 2,543 feet long, 127 feet tall, 59 miles per hour, and it has four inversions. Those inversions are the wing over drop at the beginning, a zero G roll, a corkscrew, and an inline twist through a broken church. We'll also be talking about theming in today's video, which is once again really good. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the layout of the swarm. Your ride experience starts on the swarm when you pull out of the station and start heading up the lift hill, but with the magic of editing, you are at the top. Since this is a wing coaster, you are on either side of the track, so that's why the POV kind of looks weird. You start with a wing over drop, diving down towards the ground underneath an airplane wing and going up into the zero G roll before diving back down through a billboard up into a helix that is surprisingly really intense going back down over the water which is also really intense into a corkscrew which is a nice floaty element underneath the billboard that you previously went through and then into the church supports through a barrel roll hitting the first set of brakes before turning down to the left where you slowly turn through the brush over there into the brake run, and that is the Swarm. The Swarm at Thorpe Park is a kind of interesting coaster in a way. It is a ride that is very well themed, but extremely short, but at the same time being extremely forceful. Wing coasters are not particularly known to be forceful. I think Wild Eagle, outside of the first drop in Vertical Loop, is completely forceless. But this coaster has such a mixed batch of forces that I actually quite like it. It doesn't have airtime, but it has a feeling that's kind of similar to airtime. Airtime is forcing you out of your seat. This feels natural. This feels like you're just floating in midair, suspended in the air, just vibing, just chilling. And this feeling is honestly quite good and is why I really like this coaster a lot. I rode this ride seven times. I've been to Thorpe Park twice, however, I only got on it this last year because if you saw my stealth review, I gave a real quick overview of my 2018 Thorpe Park trip, which I will summarize here. It was really bad, the weather was awful, and we were going to go the day before, but the M25 said, we're going to hold you for seven hours while a truck full of oil spilled all over the road. So essentially, I got there on that day in 2018, and three coasters were open, Saw, Colossus, and Stealth. And Saw only opened in the final 30 minutes of the day, so that's why I got on that then. But the Swarm, thankfully, did open this time around. However, it was halfway through the day when it decided to open. The Swarm, you see, has a very dumb policy, where if the wind is even slightly existing, then the ride cannot operate. And that is for actually most of the coasters here, except for Stealth. 
Stealth is the tallest coaster, mind you, and is the coaster that does not have a lift hill to get to the top. And Stealth is the one that can operate in the wind. It doesn't quite make sense. The Swarm, I guess the reason is because of the wing over drop and the wind can like push back the train or something. But I don't know exactly how heavy these trains are, but I know they're a couple of tons. That's kind of heavy. That's kind of really heavy. I don't think wind can push that back. But I digress. I'll let Thorpe Park make their own rules, whether they're dumb or not. All I'll say is I don't agree with it. The Swarm, however, when it is operational, is a fantastic creation by B&M. This coaster, as I've said previously, is forceful. The floaty feeling is fantastic. The theming, even though the theming wasn't done by B&M, Thorpe Park knocked it out of the park. Quite literally. This coaster is kind of on the outskirts of the park, so that's where you'll find it. It's on a little island off of the main island, which is fine, but that's it's whatever. Uh, the coaster does look very nice, though, because of said theming. The plane wing under, or I guess over the first drop, is absolutely fantastic. There's a helicopter, a fire truck that I think used to spit out fire. It doesn't anymore. The water effects when I was there did work, which was fantastic. And in the POV that you just watched, it also worked. Which, by the way, thank you for, or thank you to Attraction Source for the POV. Greatly appreciated. Even though I didn't ask for it, I just kind of used it. Anyways, shout at him. And this coaster, um, th again, theming. The station also, mm, it's pretty good. And the noise and kind of ambience in the area is just really good. And the swarm also makes a really, really weird noise. Sometimes, occasionally, over the first drop or when you're at the bottom of the first drop. And I'll play that noise now. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Overall, this coaster is really fun. The forces are great. Just be warned, it does have a height maximum of six foot four inches or one point nine five meters. Be warned, I can't ride this ride anymore unless I like sign a waiver or whatever, which I don't know if Thor Park even does that. But that's what I'm gonna do for future coasters. If I can't ride them, I'll try to get. The park to let me sign a waiver to ride them. Hey, I'll, I'll do whatever. I just want to ride the big hunks of steel and wood that you call roller coasters. I call them fun. This ride gets a 9 out of 10. It is really fun. The best wing coaster in my opinion. And that shows that size does not matter even though it does. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.